that says, oh, there are no godly women out there, so I'm just going to be an MGTOW or whatever stupid, a that's not even a good acronym. It's too long. It's five letters. MGTOW, that's too much. Too much. Too long. It sounds, it, it sounds effeminate because you're, you're too in touch with your feelings or something. I'm going my own way. Why don't you be a man and get a woman to follow you? Why don't you man up and quit whining about how bad all the women are? Why don't you be a leader? Why don't you win somebody to Christ and teach them how to do it right? I mean, maybe I should start a thing called pastors going their own way. Uh, I just can't do what I want as a pastor. I just can't lead the church. So I'm just going to go be in a living room with a camera somewhere and have no church members because I'm just going to go my own way. Oh. See, parents are trying. And by the way, all the Hollywood movies. Oh, my parents won't let me watch the Hollywood movies. Hey, they're trying to protect you. Amen. Why? Because those Hollywood movies are going to destroy your mind and cause you to believe all the stupid stuff that the rest of the world believes in. See, we in this room here today, uh, hearing Bible preaching, are considered, you know, fanatics or extreme because we believe you're supposed to be pure on your wedding day, because we don't believe in drinking alcohol, because we believe in living soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. And the reason why we're seen as extreme is because all the people out there are all watching the same movies and the same TV shows that glorify drinking, that glorify premarital relations, that glorify adultery, that glorify drugs, that glorify everything that this book is against. And every single movie in the theater out there, it has an agenda to brainwash you in some area or other. Whether it's to get you to accept sodomites and think they're normal, whether it's to get you to think that drinking is, uh, is fun, whether it's to get you to think that going to bed on the first date is normal. That's what the movies are promoting. That's what they teach. <laughs> Look, I'm not preaching anything that would have sounded out of place before there was a famine of hearing God's word in this country. And because there's a famine of hearing God's word in this country, somebody actually pulls out the word of God and start preaching what it really says about the sodomites. And people are, ah, oh, I've never heard that before. You know what it reminds me of? It's like when you give someone a new food that they've, well, I've never seen that before. I've never tried that. You know, some people just, they won't try anything new. Well, I, you know, give me something I'm familiar with. Give me chicken fingers, amen? You know. <laughs> That's what you, you know, if somebody doesn't like chicken fingers, you're in trouble. Because that's usually a go-to if somebody's picky, chicken fingers and fries. I mean, it's just, you can't go wrong. But this attitude that says, well, I've never, you know, oh, I can't believe it. Well, it's not my fault that there's a famine of hearing God's word. You know, I, we, we've opened up a spiritual cafeteria here, you know, and, and, and we're, we're, we're trying to just, shovel out as much food as we can. I mean, we're trying to move people through the line and we're just slopping the food onto their plate and stuff, you know, and then through the internet. I mean, we've just got all kinds of delivery trucks just bringing bags and bags. You know, we're going down to Guyana. We're going to Malawi. We're going all over America. We're going to these soul winning marathons and we're just bringing suitcases and suitcases full of delicacies for people to get some good food, to get some spiritual meat on the bones. And then, literally, over the issue of the sodomites, of all things, people are just like, oh, I've never tasted anything like this before. It's Roy's Fusion. Do you know how much that costs? Yeah, oh, I, I don't know what this is. I want a happy meal. I want a happy sermon. I want a toy in it. Where's the toy? Grow up. Now, did they give you a toy at Roy's? I didn't get a toy either. There's no toy handed out at Roy's Hawaiian Fusion. Was they, did they have a playland in the back with a slide? Yeah, I didn't, yeah, I didn't see it either. And you know, the Palestinians. And, the, and don't let these Hollywood blue-eyed, red-haired Jews fool you. Those aren't even real Jews. They're from Poland. Jesus was probably of a light brown complexion if we just use common sense. But does that mean everybody in the room who's light brown should be like, yes, Jesus looks like me, yeah. 
It's so dumb. I mean, or, or yeah, he's white. Yeah, I knew he was white. Underline white. Yeah. That just shows the wickedness and carnality. If God wanted us to know what Jesus looked like on this earth, it would have given us a very detailed description. Is his hair wavy? Is it straight? Is it curly? Is he short? Is he tall? Is he thin? Is he, is he broad shouldered? It doesn't matter. If it mattered, he'd tell us it doesn't matter. And look, I, I won't be, I don't care what God looks like when I get there. And in the form of Jesus, of course, because we're not going to just waltz into heaven the first day and see God the Father. We're going to see Jesus. I don't care what he looks like. I don't care what he, but I guarantee you this, I'm not going to walk in. He's not going to be Chinese. It's just not going to happen. And you say, oh, you just don't like Chinese people. No, it's because he wasn't born in China. He didn't live in China. He didn't preach in China. It would just be dumb to say, oh, he's Chinese. It's just dumb to say, oh, he's black. He wasn't in sub-Saharan Africa, folks. He's in the Middle East. He didn't come to Ethiopia. He went to Israel. And look, I don't expect him to be an Irish redhead either because he didn't come to Ireland. He was manifested bodily in the Middle East. And this stupidity of making God a black woman is nothing against black people. It's just stupid because he wasn't black and he wasn't a woman. And if you believe either of those things, you're a liar because that's not what the Bible teaches anywhere. And the whole fact that people are offended by that, and, and here's what happens. Whenever anybody confronts this author and says, well, what, do you really think that God's a black woman? He's a, he's a well, what do you think? He's a white man. Yeah, I do. That's what it says in Revelation chapter one. So put that in your pulpit, and smack it. I don't care whether you like that or not. It's what the Bible said. And they're just trying to use race to cover up the fact that they made God into a woman. You know, like, as if that's the big deal, that it's a black woman. If it was a fat white woman, that'd be a problem, too. Do you really think I'd be less offended by this? But Well, at least they made it a fat white woman. You really think I would care? You really think that would affect the price of tea in China if it's a fat white woman or a fat black woman in this book? But fat black women everywhere are apparently getting excited about this book because Oprah Winfrey loves it because of the narcissism of demanding that God look just like you. It doesn't matter what God looks like, folks. And if you think it does, you're carnal. It's his word that matters. That's who he is. Who he is is defined by his word, not just he's such a good looking guy. Okay. Okay, well, what about this? Let's say somebody's married to, because remember, it's all about relationship. Let's say somebody's married to a woman for 20 years, okay? And then that person, after being married to their wife for 20 years, that guy goes out and spends a weekend with a different woman that's not his wife. And he spends a weekend with a different woman that is nothing like his wife. She doesn't look like his wife. She doesn't act like his wife. She does not have the same beliefs as his wife. Different skin color, different hair, different every, just a completely different woman. And he spends a weekend with this strange woman. And then he comes back and says, oh, now I understand what it really means to have a deep relationship with a woman. Now I understand intimacy. Oh, it's so great. I'm such a better husband now. I'm such a better husband because I've come back now understanding the man-woman relationship so much better after spending a weekend with this other woman that's nothing like my wife. What would you say about that man? Would you say that he loves his wife? Then how are you saying that somebody who reads this book loves God? This is a God that looks nothing like the God of the Bible, believes nothing like the Bible, the God of the Bible, talks nothing like the God of the Bible, has nothing in common with the God of the Bible. People spend time with this God, and then they come back and say, oh, I just love God so much more now that I went a-whoring with a different God. Right, right, right. Now look down at your Bible there in Exodus chapter 34, because the Bible always calls worshiping other gods going a-whoring. It says in verse 12, take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, 
lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. But ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. For thou shalt worship no other god. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. And they go a whoring after other gods. And do sacrifice unto other gods. And one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice. And thou take of their daughters unto thy sons. And their daughters go a whoring after their gods. And make thy son go a whoring after their gods. It's whoring. It's a spiritual adultery when you're hanging out with some other God, bowing down to some other God, worshiping some other God, reading about another God and preferring that God to the real God. No, the New Testament didn't change your life. The shack changed your life. Oh, the New Testament just got me all into just legalism and oh, churchianity. And oh, the chain of command, I have to actually obey Christ. I mean, all that stuff about wives obeying their husbands and children obey your parents. I mean, the God of the Bible is such a drag. They prefer this fat black mama instead of the God of the Bible. They prefer that God. Why? Because they don't love God. No one, no one, no one who reads this book loves God if they, if they like this book. You say, will you say that about Ken Hovind? I don't care who it is. Anybody who loves this book doesn't love God. If the shoe fits, put it on. Amen. Well, I thought you liked him. You know what? Any, look, I don't care if my best friend or my brother or my sister or anybody promotes this kind of wicked garbage. I'll call them out. Amen. I don't care if it's a pastor that I ordained and laid hands on, which, you know, thank God I don't believe will, will ever happen with any of the ones that we've sent out. Amen. I don't care who's promoting it. You know, we're not supposed to just have this, lo well, just loyalty to our buddies or something. No. If you're going to teach this kind of a whoredom, this is not the God of the Bible, folks. Try, come, I dare you to come defend this garbage to me after the service. No one will. I mean, I know everybody here agrees or else you wouldn't even come to a church like this. <laughs> but the point is that anybody who loves this book doesn't love God or else then I'm, I could just go into the arms of a strange woman and then claim that makes me love my wife more. Because I hung around with some Hindu God. What difference is that than you going with some Hindu chick and leaving your wife? Oh, it just taught me so much about relationship to be an adulterer. Okay, you say, but it's just fiction. Okay, well then why don't you write a fictional account of you having a whoring weekend with another woman? How about that? Huh? Why don't you go write a book why don't you go write a book about you sleeping with a woman other than your wife and then come and say it's just fiction? Huh? Is that make it okay? Because it's fake. I guess it's just if it's fiction, it can be sin, it can be smut, it can be blasphemy, it can mock God because it's just fiction. I don't care what you, section of the bookstore you put it in. When you blaspheme God, it's a sin. When you lie and put words in God's mouth, when you sit there and make other gods and teach Hinduism instead of Christianity, that is not acceptable. Amen. You don't promote this garbage and they, oh, it's just fiction. Well, it's the wrong kind of fiction. And millions of people are going to see this movie. It's not even done. It's only been out for two weeks. It's grossed 43 million. I mean, how, how, how long do movies spend in the theater? Two months, somebody said. Is that, is that accurate? Well, we know this is good. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, you know, a month or two. I mean, this thing's probably going to hit, this probably, thing's probably going to make 100 million bucks. Why? Because we live in a country filled with idiots, that's why. Because churches are filled with people who don't love God, and they're so sick of this book, they're so irritated by this book, and they're just, oh, that God, he's so mean, and just, they just don't love Jesus. So they have to make their own fake Jesus because they don't love the real Jesus. That's the real problem. If you love your wife, you're not seeking to go a whoring from her. And if you love God, you're not seeking other gods. You're, you're happy with him. This is not the God of the Bible. Creates a faggoty culture in the church when we start teaching that God's a woman and, and you got to be emotional and in touch with your feelings. And, you know. How about work? The, the Bible talks a lot about work, too. This book just scoffs at work. Working for the Lord is just a joke. It's all about sitting out in the woods and navel-gazing. It's Hindu. 
Christianity is about working and building something. That's why the Western world has actually built this whole world. Because of Christianity. Not because of skin color or any other dumb ideas people have. It's because of Christ. Amen. And it's the Eastern, mysticist, Buddhist, Hindus, right, who sat around building nothing. And you say, ah, oh, Buddhism's so good. Yeah, communist China. Why don't you go live there? That's where Buddhism abounds. Oh, but Hinduism, then go move to India since it's such a wonderful place. Right? Wrong. Christianity teaches you to work and build something. Amen. And, you know, yeah, there are a lot of great Chinese and Indian people who do a lot of great works that they learn from Christians. They learn from Christians how to build something and do something with their life instead of going around and eating garbage and living outside and sleeping on the earth and forsaking their family so that they could go look inside themselves for enlightenment and reach nirvana. You say, well, this preaching's offensive. I'm never coming back. Good, I'll give you the whole thing while you're here. Then you won't have to come back. I'm giving you everything right now. Amen. That the only right religion is Christianity. Amen. The only true God is the God of the Bible. Amen. The only manifestation of that God is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only bodily form he's ever appeared in or ever will appear in. Amen. Jesus and Buddhism and Hinduism teach people to fail at life. And Christianity teaches people to succeed at life and build something. Amen. Ah, you're a racist. Get out of here with your stupid racist garbage. I don't... You accuse me of whatever you want. You call me whatever you want. Everybody who knows my doctrine says that, knows that I believe that God made all nations of the earth of one blood. The only race is the human race. The only race in the Bible is run the race. Amen. <laughs> Sit there and put me on some guilt trip for being a white man. Get out of here. Take that stupid liberal crap somewhere else. I'm not interested. Amen.